Hi again, everybody. Welcome to my second video. We are just making strides here, minute by minute, learning and growing together, right? Okay, so in all seriousness, um, my first video was part one of this video. It was YouTube made me buy it. No, YouTube did not hold a gun to my head, but still, all of those hours of watching tutorials, YouTube definitely made me buy it. Um, this part is going to just be a quick review of each of those products that I have used. Now I'm going to link my first video below. I'm going to link the first part below. So the actual um, YouTube made me buy it. You'll see the link below. It'll be right near that subscribe button, the other one I want you to hit. Okay. So go ahead and subscribe because there's only lots more to come in the future from hauls to giveaways to swaps with some of the other lovely ladies. Um, if I can get a hold of them through YouTube. Uh, and of course, there's just going to be lots of opportunity for you to get to know who I am, get to know my personality. Sign says it all. Sarcasm is served here fresh every day, now served all day. Um, I am sarcastic. I try to be funny. And if I'm trying too hard, please also let me know down below. So subscribe, thumbs up the video, check out the first video. That's what you have to do. Now my job. So this is just going to be a quick review. We're going to try and keep this short and sweet. I basically have organized this into two categories. Um, out of everything that YouTube made me buy, there's not anything I would say like don't buy. So I just separated it into I would highly recommend these or you can't live without them. Um, of course, you have to think what fits you in your lifestyle and your makeup routine. Um, and then the other category is like uh, it's not a necessity. You can live without it. Uh, there's not anything I blatantly don't like in any of these products. So just bear with me. I'm going to have reasons for why you should or shouldn't buy it either. Okay? So let's get started. Um, and it may not be the exact order of the first video, and I won't be mentioning who it is. Sorry, I had to crack my knuckles. <laughs> um, who it is that made me buy it. i um, just going to go over products. So the first thing that we're going to go over is the Sigma brushes. So here's how I feel about the Sigma brushes. Um, absolutely love them. They are so affordable. Uh, my experience with professional makeup brushes prior to this was essentially just MAC and MAC I think I don't know like I have some MAC brushes and I'm not gonna say like oh you have to buy MAC I, I think Sigma may be the way to go now Sigma and Real Techniques I'm really happy with the bristles and the way that they feel and the different shapes and variety that they have and I'm sorry but I'm happy with the price point uh, I paid 30 something dollars for MAC brush and that's just a little ridiculous so my life-changing brush is the Sigma F80 the flat top kabuki this is life changing, and I know that that sounds cheesy and ridiculous, um, simply because it has just made such an impact in my makeup, period. I hate getting foundation on my fingers, first of all, so that was always difficult every day. I'd be like, oh, here we go again, time to do foundation. Now, instead, I have no issue with it because I'm not getting foundation anywhere but my face and on the brush. Um, and then it's just so easy to buff and to put it on. Uh, it gives it an airbrush finish. You don't see any kind of lines, marks, creasing, nothing. Just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and like Jacqueline Hill said, because, okay, fine, in this case, she made me buy these. Um, you made me say it. But like she said, they're synthetic, so they don't absorb any of the product. So I'm not losing... I mean, before, if I did foundation, even with my fingers, if I went to, like, rub it in, you're going to end up with some on the hands, and, I mean, that's wasting because it dries in. In this case, nothing is drying into the brush. It's just buffing it all, so I'm actually using less foundation, and the foundation is, is going on thinner, but I'm still getting more coverage because of the technique of the brush. Hmm. She won that for a while. So the next one is the F86, which is the Tapered Kabuki. This is what I'm going to say about this brush. I love this brush. You don't need this brush. However, cost-wise, I mean, it's like $21. So if you compare it in the long run, I personally um, think that it's either this or the Beauty Blender, which I do have YouTube made me buy it, but I forgot to bring it in. So a YouTube, um, or rather a, be <laughs> Ugh. a Beauty Blender, um, you have to wet it. It kind of makes the foundation a little bit more sheer. This kind of keeps it heavy, and this lets me make like a really... I was going to say a really straight line, but while it's straight, and if I do my, it's when I do my concealer after my eyeshadow, I can make a straight line and get rid of all that extra little 
blending out you have over here so you kind of get like a cleaned up line but at the same time because it's a brush it kind of gives it like an airbrushed effect so it kind of looks blurred so it's not like so straight and sharp like I put tape on my eye it's more of a softened, softened effect um, but at the same rate this is cheaper than a beauty blender I would go one or the other and then there's people that use their finger so this just isn't a necessity whereas I think like you need this one in your life the flat top kabuki and then I just have three I have for the eyes I have the E40 tapered blending I have the E30 pencil brush and I have the E45 small tapered blending all of them are phenomenal. Um, I think that you need all of these, in all honesty. I mean, you're, I'm going to show you my Real Techniques brushes. I would say it's one or the other. I tend to do um, a lot of different looks on myself, and I wear makeup every day, like full face, to work. Um, and I do makeup freelance on the side, so the more brushes I can get, the better off I am. If you're not in that boat, if you're going to pick a look and stick with it and do it every day, and you're not doing other people, more power to you, you don't need as many brushes. So these are phenomenal. I think that you need them. This is great for transition shade. Um, blends it out really nicely too. This is great for like if you want to do like an ombre effect almost where you get really dark right in the corner or where you want to give a blurred effect and use an eyeshadow to go over black line or underneath so it softens it. Pencil brush is phenomenal. And then as far as the small... Um, tapered blending I use that for the bulk of my crease color so this will be like something um, like here I'll show you these because these are the next and these definitely I think you must have too these are the makeup geek colors this is creme brulee and cocoa bear creme brulee is the lighter shade it's uh nope wait ah no trouble this one this one's creme brulee you can see it's like almost like my skin even with the thing closed it's very very light so this is the kind of color that I would do with this brush right here the one that's leaning forward in case you can't tell there you go so this one um, is a good transition shade it's one that you would apply first to kind of blur out the edge of where you're gonna put your smoky eye number one and number two you can go back in with it repeatedly um, and kind of continue to blend that line out and then this is where I would do a darker shade right in the crease and kind of start to create that V or that angle on the outside corner um, I mean essentially you're gonna go in this order like this from my left to right so I think it should be from your right to left right right okay um, so we'll just flip it around so it goes from your left to your right uh, this is pretty much the order you're gonna go in though you're constantly gonna come back to that brush for blending phenomenal highly recommend these I mean these are like twelve dollars a piece and then the face ones are about twenty one bucks so cost effective then next like I just said the makeup uh, geek eyeshadows I have creme brulee which I showed you already this is cocoa bear I have a couple others but I don't feel the need to show them because when you've seen one you've seen them all uh, check out their website makeupgeek.com these are designed after the formula of MAC they're very 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 creamy though I find them to be creamier than MAC's because I do have MAC eyeshadows but they're definitely creamy there's really no and I mean there's no fallout from them so you get your money's worth with these these were $7.99 I think I said that in my first video too um, and only because I got the compact if I got just the pan and I had a Z palette to put them in then they would be $5.99 so whichever one floats your boat check them out then these are the real techniques brushes like I said can never have too many brushes and I have more than these but these are the important ones. So this is the multitasking brush. Um, this one you suppose you supposedly can do anything with it. I just, to be honest, can't review it. I just want to show it to you. I I haven't used it yet. I have to. I definitely have to get on that boat since I've owned it long enough. This is my favorite, and like I said in my first video, it's the um, deluxe crease brush. This gets a bad rap on YouTube. I've seen bad reviews about this all over the place, and shame on you, the people that say that, because. This is phenomenal. This is like the, um, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion, so I'm only kidding. But this is like the, the E40 tapered blending, except if you see how dark, or, or not dark, how short um, those bristles are, and there's so much more depth to them. There's so many more bristles than there are in this brush, it feels like. If you really are working with a dark color and having an issue blending it out, this should be the brush that you go to, because that baby, like kicks it up a notch and is like, oh no, you're blending out whether you want to or not. This is the buffing brush, supposedly great for foundation, haven't used it for it, have to try. This one I've used for blush and bronzer and I love it. And then this is just the powder brush, basic powder brush. This one I love too, um, nice plush, full, um, you know, full, the depth of as far as the bristles go, it's, it's got nice, it's nice and full, nice and full bristles. 
I have to expand my vocabulary apparently for this. So bear with me. Um, but love those. Okay. So next thing that you have to have is the Lush Mas Mask of Magnuminty Mask. Um, I don't know if I need to open it again. I mean, I will because it'll just, sorry, it won't autofocus. If I open it again, the worst case scenario is that it allows me to, ah, hallelujah, is that it allows me to smell it again. Because it's so good. It smells like chocolate chip mint ice cream. It is mint green, though I'm having an issue with the light. Mm -hmm. There you go. This, I find, is great. It goes on easy, so you can spread it out thin all over your whole face. Um, it feels really refreshing. It gets tight when it's dry, so you know that you're done and you can wash it off. But I've also found that this is a phenomenal spot treatment. If I have a pimple rearing its ugly head, after I wash my face and do my whole routine, I'll literally take a dot of this and put it on the pimple, and it dries it up. Um, at most, it's taken two nights. So that's not bad at all. It's definitely prevented a lot of pimples from getting worse, since I do have acne. Um, to some degree. Next is the Benefit Professional. This is a primer. I'm currently in the middle of kind of testing a bunch of primers, seeing how I like them. This one is phenomenal. I mean, it's from Nicole Guerrero, and um, as far as, you know, who recommended it, that I went and bought it. And she's absolutely right. It says that it's a pro bomb to minimize the appearance of pores, and it does. I tend to have larger pores over here. I was trying a different foundation the other day, and I used a primer by a company. I won't say who it was, but I wasn't thrilled with it. Um, and I, I felt like the foundation kind of got stuck around my pores and created these rings on my face, and you could see my pores clear as day. That won't happen with this ever. This this is a phenomenal product, and you can use it with another primer. So if you want a primer that's more for longevity and lasting of your makeup, go ahead and do it. But put this in your T-zone or where you know you have large pores first, because that all that's going to do is smooth the surface even more. Um, Urban Decay Revolution Lipstick. This one is a native. This is a nice baby pink nude so the and the one on my lip is anarchy as well um which is the the hot pink there you go um and i have to apologize <laughs> through my whole first video i kept saying it's outside my wagon wheel it's outside my wagon wheel uh, it's outside my wagon house i believe is the term um i just don't wear bright lipstick like native is definitely something that i would wear it's a nude pink it's a subtle color I'm, i don't usually like to bring attention to my lips but i put on the anarchy and i just absolutely love the brightness of the pink and the tone of it and it makes my teeth look so white because it's got blue undertone um, and then these are not designed to be long lasting lipsticks they're not going to be like oh we're a color stay I mean, they're not advertised like that, but I find them to be very moisturizing. They don't dry my, lip, my um, lips out. I find them to be very creamy, and I do find the color to last long. I mean, this is only the second time I'm wearing Anarchy, and it's only from a trial size I got with a palette. I have some exchanges to make at Sephora. I think I'm definitely going to uh, get this in an exchange, um, because when I... I and I just remembered I forgot to bring in all my NYX stuff. God almighty, I bought a ton of NYX because of YouTube, and I completely forgot to demonstrate it. But anyway, um, when this faded the other day and there was no creaminess left, my lips weren't dry, number one. And number two, I used a NYX Butter Gloss, I want to say an Eclair. And it's, it was a baby pink. And I put that on over, and it gave it almost like a strawberries and cream cast where you could see the fuchsia underneath, but it was a little understated now and had a creamy finish to it. And it was like I refreshed in the lipstick. I mean, continued to last. I literally wore it to work from like, I want to say put it on 7.30 in the morning. And until I like took a napkin and wiped my lips off that night after dinner, it had to be 9 o'clock. So I wore this thing for like 14 hours. And the color stayed true all day, even when the creaminess was gone. Impressed is an understatement. Uh, then the Milani Luminoso Baked Blush. This is like a nice, and I only have some difficulty opening it, so I'm, I'm sorry. This is a nice, like, frosted peach with like a golden sheen to it, a golden cast. I've only used it once, um, but I was really impressed. I really thought that this wasn't going to bring much tone to my skin. I mean, it's not much darker than I am. Um, and I thought it was going to be too gold. It really wasn't. I mean, I put it on top of my bronzer. My bronzer was in my, my contour area, um, you know, where my little contour falls. 
um, and this was above it and it just warmed up my skin and I was even able to do a highlighter over it uh, and it wasn't too much frost. It, it wasn't what, like I was glowing like a disco light. It was like I was shining from within. It just warmed it up. It was really good. Then this is the NYX HD Concealer. This um, is supposed to, supposedly comparable to the NARS Creamy Concealer. I haven't used the NARS Creamy Concealer, I'm not going to lie, but based on the feedback that I've heard from this, I mean, and it's talc-free, it's paraben-free, it's basically mineral enriched. I mean, I would have to think it could be comparable to a NARS, even though I'm really talking out of my butt right now because I haven't tried it. Because it's just so creamy. It doesn't dry your under eye area. It goes on so smooth and it doesn't crease. I'm, I, I am impressed with it for the price that it is. I think it was like $5.99. I'm just really disappointed in myself because I bought totally the wrong color and really could have done a lot better. Um, it looks a little gray because it's so light on me. Then this is the Wet n Wild Comfort Zone Palette. I still have a lot of playing to do with this. I can't fully review it. All I can tell you is when you go to put your brush in the powder in the compact, you're going to get a ton of fallout where you're going to be like, whoa, hold on, I'm not putting that anywhere near my face. Um, and there was a lot of fallout, and it kind of sucks that there's, you know, light and dark, but I kind I guess they kind of, like, get to the dark, so it's not like you're going to destroy your lighter colors completely, um, and I'm really good with just cleaning up after and getting the excess out of here, but for as much fallout as there was in here, I didn't really have much on my skin. Um, I was really impressed. It kind of went on my eye and just stayed on my eye, and the color payoff is unbelievable. Five dollars for this palette. Five dollars. For five dollars, there could have been fallout. I could have had to work harder for a color payoff, and I still wouldn't have cared, but I was really impressed with this. Um, and I really, unfortunately, it doesn't tell you all of the colors at all, but this color here, because of the light, it looks just like a iridescent blue. It's actually not. It has an undertone of this color, which is a brown that looks akin in the compact to Roach by Urban Decay. Um, and so it has that undertone to it and then like a blue sheen. This, a uh, MAC used to make a color. I forget the name of it. They may still make it, but I haven't bought it in years. And I used to use it because I love iridescent colors like that. And I would put it on and I would just get this Roach looking color, like Urban Decay Roach. And I couldn't get the blue or the, the iridescent sheen to show. It was so frustrating. This one, I, I literally, all I had to do was take the brush, put it on, and boom, iridescence all over the place. So I'm really satisfied with this, and I highly recommend it. I haven't tried any other eyeshadows by them, except for this palette, and I think that this palette for $5 is a great starting point to let you try Wet n Wild. Also by Wet n Wild, I got the Wet n Wild from the Fergie collection. Sorry, right there, Fergie. Um, I'm trying to let you see how it's swirled together. There you go. So this is the Wet n Wild Center Stage Collection to Reflect Shimmer Palette. And this is in Rose Champagne Gold. Rose, I keep wanting to say Rose Champagne Gold. This is Rose Champagne Glow. And just in case there's any confusion because I can't speak. Oh, wrong side. It's right there. See it by next to A045. It's right above the, what is that called, skew? So this is, um, kind of has a pattern, a marbled pattern to it, and it's got, you can see the pink, like a champagne color, and the gold color all swirl together. And when you swirl your brush over it, you do get, I mean, it's kind of like skin tone. I'm trying to block the light. There you go. So you can see it's kind of like skin tone. It's not too bright. It is like a champagne with like a pink undertone to it. So definitely very soft, also helps you to look lit from within. That's actually what I used with the Luminoso blush the other day by Milani. Um, that did help me to look lit from within. Um, also, this is like the biggest, you must go out and buy this. It's so expensive and what I was trying to say in the first video was, um, everywhere I looked this was like $160 and it was $160 with their line of product um, that they sell with it. I went to SkinStore.com and I think that this pattern is discontinued but they're discontinuing patterns all the time so I would double check if I were you. But at SkinStore.com they have this Mia 2, Clarisonic Mia 2 with the Purity Cleanser from Philosophy that, um, there we go, that Jacqueline Hill recommended um, with their line of product that comes in the box and with a not only this head but a second sensitive head um, which I couldn't find second heads included in the kit anywhere. I There was no tax, there was no shipping. I paid $137 
for everything. And it was 160 everywhere else. And I don't personally really care about the pattern. I mean, this is really cute. It is, you know, um, it is raspberry colored and it is kind of like what is new in home decor. A lot of people do patterns with stuff like this, like wallpaper and whatnot. But that, I mean, that's not the reason I bought it. So definitely, definitely you have to buy this. This has taught me how bad I was treating my skin and the, the hyperpigmentation, my coloring, everything is just totally different since using this. And I kind of find it fun to use. So I have no problem washing my face every night now, like fully using the, the Purity Made Simple and giving myself a good washing every single night on my face. Um, the Josie Moran 100% Argan Oil Light. For $14, it was worth trying. For $14, I will forever continue to use this. Um, this is a great way to moisturize my skin, take better care of my skin. Um, and it doesn't make it too oily because it's tricking my skin into thinking it's already producing oil. Um, so my, my skin's not producing any more to overcompensate. It's very lightweight, goes on very smooth, smells good, I think. Um, and for the price, I think it's absolutely worth it for the amount that I've used in two months. I mean, I've literally only used this much of the bottle. Um, and definitely, definitely a great alternative to a regular moisturizer if you're like me and you can't use it. And then the last thing that I think you must purchase is the Bombshell Volume by Lash Blast. Yes, it's $12. Yes, that's expensive for drugstore mascara. But you're getting two tubes, which I have tried in all honesty, and you can use independently of each other. You do not have to use them both. Um, but when you do use them both together and you do do multiple layers of each, it's kind of like wearing fake lashes. But for me, it's less irritating than fake lashes. You don't get any fallout. They don't crumble down as the day goes on. They're easily removed with makeup remover at the end of the night. Um, but without makeup remover, like the, the one that you have to put on a cotton pad, you're not going to get them off. These don't budge. Um, but... And they don't clump. That's the other thing. Um, as many layers as I've done, you first you have to do all the layers of one you want to do, and then you start with two and do all the layers of two you want to do. And as many layers as I've done of each, which maximum has been three, they don't they don't clump, um, which is not easy to to find. And actually, I just saw something that snuck by, which is the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I also recommend this. Why would you want to spend close to $20, or this may be $21, on an eyebrow pencil? And my current eyebrows are the reason why. I don't know if you can see. I'm trying to look in the, the lens and see uh, if you can tell. I did not do these with the Brow Wiz today. If I had done them with the Brow Wiz, they come out very soft and feathered, yet the edges look sharp. And every time I do it, they're totally even. It's just my only complaint is that the, the tip is so small I feel like it takes me forever to do them when I do them with this which is a little frustrating um it's just so tiny but today I had to use a pencil that was a little waxy and brush them through and then I still wasn't happy so I had to go back in with powder to make this look a little sharper because it was too blended out I, it took me longer in the long run to be honest but this is phenomenal. As small as it is, you can be more detailed and more accurate with it. And then just really quickly, the things that I do not recommend, and sorry if the camera is shaking, or not that I don't recommend them. I do. I like them. I use them. I don't think they're a necessity. First is the Sonia Kush. Sonia Kushak, I almost said. The Sonia Kasha, the undetectable cream bronzer in warm tan. This, first of all, I personally think that they didn't have the other one the day I went, and this is the one that Love and Melissa Michelle talked about. I just feel like it's a little too orange for me, almost, um, number one. Uh, number two, I'm not really sure how to use it yet. I'm still getting the hang of contouring my own face, and I just feel like it's a little too heavy, and by the time I put powder on, I have to cover it with with powder bronzer anyway because you can't even see this anymore so as orange as it appears it disappears when I put everything else on go figure so for eleven dollars at Target you don't need it uh, I love this I'm so happy I bought this so please don't get me wrong but I don't think you need this um, this is the one the NARS Guy Bourdain palette I'm just gonna take the plastic out this has the six colors I'm just gonna there we go so you can actually see the colors so this one, I have not used that baby pink on top. The Laguna is fantastic, but I have other bronzers. The highlighter is awesome, but it's buildable and needs to be built. And then right in the middle of the bottom, you have Orgasm right by my finger. And then I have no clue what the names of these two colors on the other side are, but they're pretty. They're very pretty. 
why don't you need it? I personally am a huge orgasm fan and I think that orgasm is an absolute necessity and to be honest now that I'm looking at it I think that this one may be uh, orgasm and this one in the middle is like no name um, now that I think about it. I personally love orgasm. I think that it's just such a nice peach glow. It just lights you from within. I haven't used the baby pink. I would love to try it. The Laguna, I have alternatives. And the highlighter, I really like the Fergie one more, to be honest. So for $68, which is what I think it was, you don't need it. It's not a necessity. Go buy a bronzer, go buy a highlighter, and go buy a blush. You don't need everything in one palette. Um, this is the Sephora uh, Smoothing and Brightening Concealer in Pink. $17 for this. Not sure if it's more or less or the same as the MAC one that Jaclyn Hill recommended, the Prep and Prime. It's a beautiful pink color. Definitely highlights. I do love it. Um, but for $17, it's not a necessity. I have the Dream Lumi one too by um, Maybelline. A lot cheaper. I didn't buy it in that color. I did buy it in a beige. I don't necessarily notice a huge difference between either of them. From I mean, I notice a difference from nothing to using one of them, but I just don't notice a difference between the two of them that you might as well just go spend $6.99 instead of $17. Um, then these two, okay, so this one, I'm, uh, I don't dislike this. This is the Voluminous Carbon Black. I mean, the brush is really convenient. It's small. You can do your bottom, and I'm sorry I'm trying to rush because I'm watching the time. Um, very convenient to do bottom lashes can get a little clumpy, you could see how much extra product's on there, and I don't really like to wipe it off on a towel or anything, because then you're just wa you're wasting what you paid for. Um, but I do like this. It definitely did make my lashes dark. I just, oh, I bought like a kit that uh, was really, it was on QVC, and I'm sure you've seen it, the Tarte, I think, Bow and & Go, and it came with two of the Lights Camera Lashes, and I'm so not a Sephora mascara person. Like, I don't use expensive mascara. It expires in three to four months anyway. I, I love, love, love the um, Lights Camera Lashes. I just do. The brush is smaller. It doesn't clump. Not too much product comes out, and I can manipulate it even better, and I definitely use it for my lower, lower lashes. This one, the this is the liner, the Carbon um, Black Linear Intense. I'm actually kind of dissatisfied with this. I'm not going to lie. Let me know if you're having trouble. Comment below if you are. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe you guys have tips you can even teach me. But this one, I just feel like um, I had to struggle to build it up when I put it on. I feel like it comes out gray or like you go put more on and it streaks some of the previous, what you applied previously off. And then just during the day, like if you accidentally touch your eye, which I mean, I have an itch. I'm human. And if I accidentally touch my eye, like this will come off in one, two, three. Because I'm not talking like I rub it. I'm aware I'm wearing makeup. But like if I have an itch in the corner, I'm like, oh, 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 I have an itch boom huge chunk of my eyeliner missing who the heck wants to walk around like that and I don't bring this to work with me so I can't fix it so now I'm walking around looking cockeyed all day and that I don't appreciate so then the last thing the very last thing I happen to like it I don't think that you need it but hey for the price might as well so it's the BH cosmetic um, and I'm gonna open it and take the plastic out so you could see it better this is the 28 color palette for the neutral eyeshadow um, some of these have awesome color payoffs some of these not so much um, so for instance if we go right here and these don't have names these colors and I have a fuzz on my hands that I don't want you to have to see okay so this is like a rich, warm, golden bronze frost. And you can see, I mean, the light is catching it. There's gold undertone in there. I'm going to get the hang of showing you guys stuff. I promise. Just bear with me. Um, that one has excellent color payoff. I use that one frequently. I absolutely love it. It's a great, like, mid-lid shade when you're doing a smoky eye. Then this, of course, is going to look great on my finger. But, so this is a black. This is a black with, like, burgundy glitter in it almost it comes out gray it totally comes out gray and I've gone to use it before in like the very corner of my eye I mean you get what you pay for it's eleven dollars and for a freelance kit I mean I have other blacks so I can definitely build it up and all the other colors are fantastic I mean there's a white frost that's in here in, in the bottom corner it has kind of like a green sheen to it it's an iridescent I think it's so cool and you're never going to be able to see. 
Oh, whoa, look at that. So you can't see the green sheen, but I love it. Um, for $11, okay, fine, treat yourself. Are you going to die if you don't have it? No, I'm definitely an Urban Decay girl. Uh, if I only had 56 or $52 on me to spend and I couldn't afford $11 on anything else, I would take my $52 and buy Naked 3, to be honest, because... I just find those colors um, really versatile, wet, dry. I mean, I do use these wet and dry too, um, but wet, dry, you know, they kind of all go together transitionally, and what you see is what you get as far as what you pay for um, with the Naked 3. So if it's one or the other, get the Naked 3. Hey, if you can swing the 11 bucks, then heck yeah, buy BH Cosmetics. It's fantastic for the price. Um, so that's pretty much it. So what's to come in the future? I have more reviews. I have a couple more hauls from the last two months to go over with you guys. Uh, I'm going to come up with some giveaways because I want to get you all involved. And of course, step one, subscribe. All right. Thank you for checking out video number two. Sorry I hit the table. Take that drama mean again. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.